Do it. Go ahead, be seated. So if you don't know who I am, my name is Marty. This is our team. We've got my wife, Bridget, David Sandy over there, uh, part of our team. And uh, we're from John G. Lake Ministries Canada. And we travel the world. Thank you so very much. We, we travel the world and preach the gospel. We're, that's just what we do. Set people free. So uh, it is the, the greatest pleasure in the entire world to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Period. Right? It's not, it's not a chore. It's, uh, it's, not, it's not a burden. It is a duty. If you're a Christian, it is your duty to preach the gospel. Period. Right? There, there is no such thing as hidden faith or quiet faith. Well, you know, I'm just one of those quiet Christians. There's no such thing. Well, you know, I just kind of hide in my prayer closet and that's where I take care of things. Then you're not letting your light shine. Do you see that? There is no such thing as a quiet Christian. You speak boldly. That's what the Bible says. So we're just going to get real bold today because you don't get to define what a Christian is. The Bible gets to define what a Christian is. And the, Christian, the Bible says that Christians will let their light shine and they will speak boldly and they will lay hands on the sick and they will preach the gospel. Well, I'm not a preacher. Yes, you are. Of course you are. You're a carrier of Jesus Christ. So you're, the, you're a preacher. You may not travel on planes and trains and automobiles, but you're a preacher. Why? Because you have a neighbor. You have a family member. You have somebody around you that needs to be saved. You're a preacher. You're a carrier of the truth. And if, if you listen, if you, if your faith is hidden, you don't have faith. Period. If your faith is quiet, you don't have faith. If your salvation is quiet, you might not be, even be saved. Why? Because faith speaks. Good morning. Is that not true? Show me anywhere in the Bible that says just to keep your mouth shut. Nowhere. See, the problem is you're afraid. You're afraid to be ridiculed. You're afraid to be mocked. You're afraid to say whatever. Faith never fears. If you're in fear, you're not in faith. They can't coexist. Period. No Christian should ever live in fear. You should never be in fear of sickness. You should never have a fear of, of, of a disease. You should never have a fear of, of lack or poverty or anything like that. A Christian should never fear. Fear is the enemy of faith. If you're in fear, you're not in faith. Period. End of story. Well, my faith is different. There's only one kind of faith. There's no your faith and biblical faith. It's faith. And faith never fears. It's just you got to get that. Okay, now, we're going to cover a couple of different areas today, um, this morning. I highly suggest if you're just here for like the, the normal morning service, we're going to be taking a break at about 1130 for about five, 10 minutes, and then we're going to go back into another session until 1230, okay? So if you're just here for the normal church service, stay for the other session, okay? Just you know, lunch can wait or whatever the case may be. All right. The dog at home will be fine. You need to get this in you because the world needs to see tr real Christianity, not religion, not fake Christianity. That's what needs to happen. And I don't care if you're young. I don't care if you're old. It, the, the world does not need to see fear. It needs to see faith. Period. It needs to see boldness, not fear. Okay. Now, again, we're going to go to a couple of different areas this morning. So I got to hit as much as I can here in case you're staying for just one session. We got to get this. We got to get this in you. Okay. Now, quickly, one of 
the biggest, I might get the baby again. One of the biggest things is, it's, I, for, if you weren't here the other day, why not? No, kidding. This is a baby. I love babies. So if you see a baby, then automatically, you could take the biggest, scariest dude in the whole wide world and you give him a baby or a puppy and he turns into mush. That's just what happens, right? So I just love babies. So now I lost my train of thought. But be, be, being led by the Spirit, okay? People, it's, it's hilarious. When, when people become a Christian or are Christians, they want to be led by God every moment of the day. What socks should I wear? You know, what, what, what should I do here and what should I do there? All right? You know, oh, I see somebody that needs help. Uh, Lord, do you want me to help them? Well, of course he does. Well, you don't understand. I need a word. You're not in faith. You're not in faith acts. Period. So here's the amazing thing, is that when, when you weren't a Christian, okay, now who, 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 you might not know what bit this, but who hung out at bars and got drunk and partied and, you know, did those things when they weren't a Christian? Because if you're doing those things now, you might not be a Christian. Maybe we should just entitle this, you might not be a Christian. <laughs> What is, that? what is that guy before? You might be a redneck or whatever. Yeah. I'm going to make a whole thing on, you might not be a Christian. That's a good idea. Don't steal that. Okay. So I'm going to use that. All right. Whatever that guy's name was. So the funny thing is when you weren't a Christian, your nature was to do wrong. Correct? hundred percent. Right now. Now, what degree of wrong? I guess that was up to you. Right? But... Like even, even Curry was talking about this this morning. It, nobody, I did lots of wrong, right? I had to, I wasn't much of a drinker or party or anything like that, but, but I was angry and I did things. But I, I, never, I, never, I never went to the devil to ask, you know, what person I should beat up. Yeah. Am, hey, hey, you know, Satan, am I going to beat up the wrong person? That's stupid. You know, now, you know, if you go to a bar, well, you know, I, 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 you know, I don't want to drink too many beers. And I don't want to sleep around too much. I only want to sleep around enough to please you, Satan. Let me, let me know when I've, you know, overstepped my boundaries. Nobody did that. Nobody asked the devil permission to do wrong. They just did wrong because it was their nature. Correct. So why, when we become Christians, why do we have to ask God to even breathe? Because he's going to get mad at you if you do too much good. It's stupid. But you, you, you had no problem with doing too much bad. When it comes over, you come over here. Oh, I don't want to pray for the wrong person. God might not. I have to get a rhema word. Okay. That whole teaching of Rhema and Logos is completely wrong in the church. Completely. The, the Logos is the written word of God, correct? Rhema is the written word you act upon. Rhema is not, oh, before I can go pray for this sister over here, God's got to quicken his word to me. He did quicken it to you. It's the written word of God and you have faith in it and you act on the written word of God and then it becomes Rhema to you. If you look at it, Rhema and Logos are virtually the same word when you study it out. But people think that you need a Rhema word, so if you can't hear God, then you never act because you haven't had God to tell you to do His word. That's a lack of obedience, which is zero faith. Zero faith. It's amazing. So now we're afraid to do too much good because God might get mad at you to do good, but Jesus' job was to go around doing good and healing all who were oppressed. You see? So the devil has you convinced that God's going to be so mad at you that you do nothing. God will be, okay, if God was going to get mad at you, he would be mad at you for doing nothing, not doing too much. Do you see? And we, oh God, I can't pray for that person. What if you don't want them free? Then why did Jesus give his life? Jesus gave his life for everybody to be free. 
And we think we're being spiritual by being obedient to God just for him to lead us to highlight that person over there or, or highlight that person over there. Everybody in the world that needs help is highlighted to you already. But people want to sound super spiritual. It is not super spiritual. It's called fear. End of story. Without a question. And it's what rules the church and it's what rules the word world is fear. Period. There is no fear in love. None. Perfect love casts out all. Fear has torment. So when you think you're being spiritual by trying to listen to the voice of God to go feed that person over there or give some money to the, to the, to the man on the corner of the, on the stoplight that's begging for money and you don't hear the voice of God, no, you're hearing the voice of the devil telling you not to do it. So you're hearing a voice, but it is not of God. It is of the enemy not wanting you to help that person. End of story. Don't shut me down because I'm preaching good. That's the truth. We need to get real or we need to get out. And if you're real, you will get out. Two different meanings of out. But we're so convinced that, that God is going to destroy your life if you do good. That's why he sent Jesus. First John 3, 8. That the reason Jesus was manifested was to destroy the works of the devil. Period. And then you took his place to do the works. See, you're not just a Christian by confession. You're a Christian by what you do. The word will not benefit you anything unless you do it. This is why people don't grow in faith. Because they don't do. They beg God for faith. Show me anywhere in scripture where you're told to ask God for more faith. I'll wait. Nowhere. What did they ask for? Boldness. To speak openly. Boldness. You see? Boldness isn't an abs necessarily an absence of fear. Boldness is acting even if there's fear. Because you overcome it. If you give in to the fear, it overcomes you and the devil gets a leg up on you. Do you see? Fear is a killer. And we think it's normal. Like I said the other day, you'll believe the box that sits in the corner of your, of your living room called the television before you believe the book called the Bible on your shelf. And you'll turn to Global or CNN or any of those devil-run organizations, state-run propaganda, to tell you how you should live your life. What should I fear today? I don't know, whatever they tell me to fear. It's true. Fear this disease, fear this sickness, fear this, fear this, fear war, fear, 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 fear. It's a fear-driven society and it keeps you locked up. End of story. You know, the fear for the last two years, obviously, has been the whole COVID thing. And then you got fear. Now you got fear of this disease and that disease. And where did the monkey pox go? Where did it go? It was the next massive pandemic. Where did it go? For a little while in there. Fear the monkey pox. It's the, I mean, even the CDC said, this is the next big thing that's going to kill everybody. Did they not? And where did it go? In a very short window, it disappeared. Why? Because nobody bought hook, line, and sinker. The fear didn't catch this time. Because some people started to wake up to the lies that they had told you about all that other stuff. I'm telling you, it is about to break that this last, the whole couple of years was nothing but a farce. It's about to break. You're going to see it come out. You're going to see. You mark my words and then email me and say, hey, you were right. It's going to come out and there, it's going to come out and there's going to be proof that this whole thing was a setup. You watch. You watch. And now they got some other bird flu and then they got some, this Marburg thing and then got this. They're, they're, it's designed to keep you in fear 
of, of sickness or war or shortage or lack. It's all designed to keep you in fear. Why? So you trust a governmental system to provide for you. And if they provide for you, they control you. Where's your faith? I had no intention of talking about faith today. None. God did. Apparently. Where is your faith? Where is your faith? Because if it's in anything else, you don't have faith. It's just that simple. You got to trust God. Because everything else will let you down. You trust God. You trust the word. This isn't a place to just come in and, you know, feel comfortable and clap your hands a couple of times and hear some good songs and then, you know, shake a few hands, kiss a few babies and head out. You're not a politician, you know, maybe you are, I don't know. And, and, and you, you leave and then you struggle all week long. That's not what it's supposed to be. You come in here and you get challenged and you get equipped. But when people get challenged, they usually leave. Well, who are you to challenge me? I'm using the word of God to challenge you. Faith is a challenge. It's tough to live in faith in this world. But unless you get that backbone, unless you get that mindset, the devil will slap you around from pillar to post. He'll use fear, depression, all the, the cares of the world. What do you think all the stuff that's been happening is a care of the world and everybody's caught in it? And a good soldier of Jesus Christ does what? Anybody know? Does not get entangled with the cares of the world. Yes, sir. Does not get entangled with the affairs of the world. What has almost everybody done in the last couple of years? Been entangled with the affairs of the world, which means what? Here's a bold statement for you. You're not a good soldier. You see? Now, I'm not here to condemn you. I'm here to challenge you to say, you know what? You're right. I might have been missing a couple things. Good. Let's move on. Let's forget that and move on. We don't look back. We look forward. Faith never looks back. It looks forward. So we have to have strong faith in this world. Why? Because you can ask the people that travel us the most and listen to me the most, all that kind of stuff. In this country, in this world, your faith is going to start costing you something. I'm telling you, I've been saying that for years now. We're entering a time where your faith will actually cost you something. Because now, if you're a Christian, you're a hater. You're a bigot. You're a misogynist. You're a, you know, I, I, I didn't even know what the word misogynist meant. I didn't. I had no idea. Apparently, I hate women. Because that's what it means, right? I, nobody informed my wife of 35 years. I guess I've hated her this whole entire time. Sorry about that. Because I stand for truth, I hate. Because I stand for truth, I'm a racist. Come on. See, the devil's going to throw everything your way to get you to come out of faith because nobody wants to be those things. And I get nobody wants to be those things. But I'm not those things. Just because I stand on truth. So we can't fear the world because the world will throw everything at you to destroy whatever faith you think or, or you have. This is the attitude you have to have. They threw everything at Jesus, including the kitchen sink, and he never bowed one time. He was never shaken one time. Because the Spirit of God was alive in him. And for most people, they're just coming into church for tradition or to get some sort of emotional uh, high for that day or to feel good about themselves or whatever the case may be. You're in it for the wrong reasons. Totally. This should cost you everything. Why should it cost God his son and cost Jesus his life, but yet cost us nothing? And to this point in this country, your faith has basically cost you nothing until this point. If you're not even sharing your faith to the people around you, it's cost you less than nothing. For most people, their faith has cost them coming into a church, sitting for an hour, hour and a half, listening to some songs, like I said yesterday, listening to a 35, 40 minute sermon, and if the pastor goes on a little too long, people are looking at their watch, and then they go out the door, and they call that faith. 
It's institutionalized Christianity. That's all that is. It's institutionalized church. We come in and we, 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 we hear a program and we go through a program and we, and we tip for the program and then we go out and we, we, we call that the blessed life. It's not. Letting your light shine in the darkness. Now I'm all for church. Don't get me wrong. We need church and we need this place packed out with people here that are coming in, getting equipped and then going out and coming back in and giving their war stories. That's what we need. You know, but what, what do we get? Well, that Pastor Travis, he talked a little too long. He said something that I didn't like. Well, too bad for you. Too bad. Is it truth? Yeah, then maybe you're wrong. And people think, oh boy, this Marty guy, he's, he, he, he just preaches so strong. How do you think Jesus preached? See, all people want these days is a hippie guru Jesus. Some new age guy driving around in a 1960s VW van with peace and love written on the side. What did Jesus say? I've not come to bring peace, but a sword. Read Matthew 23. Anybody familiar with Matthew 23? That was, was that not Jesus speaking? What did he say? You hypocrites. You brood of vipers. How are you going to escape the damnation of hell? Your father's the devil. Well, that's not very nice. But it is biblical. See, we think Jesus was just this, this guy that just went around. And he's like, oh, a little bit of peace for you. And a little bit of love for you. And he was just the nicest guy in town. No, he was not. Nice guys don't make whips and overturn money changers tables. Do you know he did? He, do you, who knows he made a whip? Do you know the money changer table story? What was he doing on the hill watching them? Making a whip as he watched them. Do you think he was happy? He's like, oh, making a whip today. Yay. I'm so happy. He was righteously indignant. That's what the Bible says. And he went down in there and he started cracking the whip and overturning the money changers tables. Throwing their money everywhere. Do you think he was being nice? No, he stood up for his father. You've made this place a den of thieves. It's supposed to be a house of prayer. Maybe I'll go into some churches and start overturning the money changers tables. Money's not the problem. It's the love of money that's the problem. So we've created this, this new age Jesus who's all inclusive. Who's just all accepting. Mm -mm. He's not. He's all accepting to those who come in him, come to him and get his life straight. And walk it out and give up their lives and pick up their cross daily and do all those different things. Absolutely. But we think that God is accepting even of evil. False. God can't change who he is to meet your sin. He can't. But that's what people think. Now, we have a whole world that's confused. Yeah. Totally confused, right? Yeah. Don't know who you are. Today you're this. Tomorrow you're a cat. Whatever. Doesn't matter, it seems. God is not the author of confusion. 1 Corinthians 14, 33. God is not the author of confusion. So who is the author of confusion? Satan. So where's all this stuff coming from? Yeah. Satan. God does not approve of it. At all. None. If God approved of evil, and that's what it is, he would not be pure. He would not be moral. He would be immoral or amoral, but not moral. So we think that God is just so desperate for people that he'll just accept anybody that comes this way. That's not true. 
God can't accept your lifestyle. He changes your lifestyle. Period. You have to get that. And I know this may be hard to hear, and I know you may be confused and walking through some things or whatever the case may be, but there's freedom for you. There's freedom in Christ. And this world is trying to kill you, especially young ones. The, the world is trying to destroy your life. And who's the prince of the world? Satan. Satan. Who's the god of the world? Satan. Satan. Do you see? It's very dangerous. This is not innocent. This is extremely dangerous. The suicide rate amongst youngs, young children and things is extraordinarily high. It's unbelievable. Because they don't know what they are from day to day. And most people are scared to say anything because they don't want to be labeled as something or other. That's right. That's right. I want to be labeled a man who stood on righteousness. Amen. And if anybody else wants to call me something else, no problem. I'm standing on the word of God because everything I'm saying, I can prove it with the word of God. Amen. So if you come against me for what I'm saying, you're, you're fighting righteousness. Now hear me when I'm I'm not saying I am... I am righteousness. I'm not Dr. Fauci. He said, if you go against science, you're going against me. That's stupid. All right? That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying everything I'm saying is coming from the Bible. And when you come into Christ, you change your life. You lay down what you used to be to pick up what he is. That's Christianity. It's freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. freedom. If I took a poll in here, most of you guys would say you don't feel free. But yet you're a Christian. You should be free. Every part of you should be free. Your mind should be free. Your emotions should be free. Your mouth should be free to speak. Freely if you receive, freely. Everything should be free for you. Okay, not in the world. That would be great. Free gas, you know. But free in your... You should be so free. You shouldn't be confused. You shouldn't be angry outside of righteous anger. You shouldn't be broke down. You shouldn't be depressed. You shouldn't be sick. You shouldn't be any of those things. Why? Because Jesus paid the price for you. And people don't understand that. People don't understand the extraordinary lengths he went to set you free. Or else, why did he do it? God sent his son for you to be free, and then apparently he looks at you and goes, okay, now you're going to suffer your whole life. This was my diabolical, diabolical plan. The Christian life is not about suffering. It's about faith. Now people can say, well, the Bible talks about suffering. Okay, yes, but it never talks about suffering, sickness, disease, depression, oppression, fear, any of those things. It's suffering persecution because the world's going to hate you. But the world's not going to hate you unless you're standing up for what's right. You got to not fear being hated. Jesus said the world is going to hate you. But if it hates me, it, if it hates you, it hates him, me. And if it hates me, the world hates the one who sent me. So if you're standing on righteousness, biblical righteousness, they're not hating you, they're hating God. And if you're against God, good luck. Because I'll be fine. Why? Because God's on my side. Do you see? This is how you have to think. This is what you, you have to realize. We've been talking about it for the last three days. You have to realize that you're more than a conqueror. That you're triumphant because he always causes you to triumph in Christ. And some people have such a defeatist attitude. This is why you can't get anywhere in life. Because you, you live in your mind defeated like you're, you're a failure or you're not good enough. Or you remember everything that has happened to you and that's still alive in your mind today. Then you're living out of the carnal mind and it is destroying your life. This is what Christianity looks like. See, we've been taught Christianity is just again coming into church, clapping your hands, saying I believe in Jesus and going out the door and that's it. The devils believe and tremble. Are they saved? 
Are devils saved? No. no. But they believe. But they don't live. Do you see? So if you say you believe, you should live. If you're not living, you're truly not believing. Now, I have none of this written down. None of it. This was, this was not even the plan. The scriptures I wanted to go through are right here. This is all God. So this may be for one of you or for all of you. Doesn't, doesn't, listen, I'll go through a whole service talking to one person if I need to. That's not, why? Because God's trying to get through to you. And God, I'm telling you, God has been trying to get through to you. But he can't get through to you because you're not listening. So he sent a donkey to come in here and tell you. Correct? Now, you have to get the whole donkey reference if you don't know the Old Testament donkey spoke. Anyway. Yeah, okay. Then there's two donkeys in the room. <laughs> he sent me here this morning saying this to you which is not what I wanted to say to get it through to you because it's what he wanted to say. Don't ask me to repeat that. So he's trying to get through to you. Why? Because he wants your whole heart, ma'am. Do you see? He wants your whole heart. He wants your whole life. He wants everything about you. And we think sometimes that, that God is just despising us. You're his child. Now, if you're outside of God, you're on the wrath of God. For sure. The Bible says that the, the wrath of God is being stored up against the sons and daughters of disobedience. That's New Testament. And it gives you a list of things where you can be disobedient in. That should scare you if you're not right with God. Because as I read last night the word, the time is short. The Lord is coming back for sure. I'm not saying it's tomorrow, but it could be. It could be in the next five minutes. That'd be one of the time to do those, one of those magic tricks, those curtain things where you just disappear. You know, and everybody like, oh, I missed the boat, you know. You got to realize this is, this is Christianity is not a game. You're either all in or you're all out. There is no such thing at all of having one foot in the water and one foot on the sand. If you've got one foot in the sand, you're not in the water. There is no on the fence. You're either all in or you're all out. Period. This is not a game. I'm warning you. A lot of my preaching comes with warning. Now, warnings don't come nice and light and fluffy. They come with strength. I'm warning you to get right with God and get right with God right now. That's what needs to happen. Now, I'm not, I'm not, God is not waiting to destroy your life. He's waiting for you to live your life. Because it's his life that you're supposed to be living. And the devil's not stopping you. You are. The devil can't make you do anything. See, it's easy to blame other people. Like we said the other day. People have been blaming other people forever. Adam did it with Eve. After the whole fall, what did he say? God came down. He was looking for him. Where are you? Well, I'm naked. I'm afraid. And God said, who, who told you? And he's like, well, that, that woman over there that you gave me, yeah, she, she, she did it. And then Eve blamed the Satan, the devil. She, well, he, he made me do it. So people have been blaming each other forever. There's no one to blame but you. Period. You can't blame God. You can't blame the devil. It's you. Why? Because everything you've ever done was a choice. Now, I know bad things happen. Really bad things happen to people in here for sure. 
but it's still a choice in how you react to that bad thing or those bad things. You can't change that. So don't live in it. It's killing you. It's already killed your emotions to a large degree. And it's made you do more bad things on your own choice. You've got to stop it. It will consume you. But there is life. And life in abundance, abundant life. Now, abundant life does not mean, we're talking about John 10.10, 10, right? Abundant life does not mean super rich. For some people, it might. Abundant life is the life of Christ in you that you can give away freely. Healing, signs, wonders, you know, miracles, grace, mercy, forgiveness. All that stuff comes out of abundant life. If you have abundant life, you'll have abundant forgiveness. Did God not have abundant forgiveness? Thank the Lord he did. Otherwise, we're all done. Every one of us are in big, big trouble. God has abundant life, so he has abundant forgiveness. He has abundant mercy. So if you're living the life of Christ, you're going to have abundant life, abundant mercy, abundant grace. You see? That's life. Why? Because then nothing sticks to you. So many of you in here have had so much stick to you and it's, it's stuck to you. And it's still stuck to you. And it's been foreversville. It's not supposed to be that way. You're supposed to be whole. Healed. Set free and delivered. Why? Because the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords took up residence inside of you. You should have abundant freedom. Abundant joy. That that's all comes out of abundant life. Abundant hope. Abundant faith. God doesn't lack faith. So he has abundance of all that stuff. And it, that, all that abundance is in you, in the Spirit of God, living in you, if it is. Do you see? That's wonderful. It, it, this is why Christianity is the best thing you could ever do in your life. Because you, just, you exude that abundant life. You exude joy in the middle of the worst times of your life. Abundant death. Okay, listen, I've never preached on this before in my life. I've never said these words. Ever. Abundant death is fear. You see? Abundant life is faith. Abundant death is fear. Now, depending on which degree of fear you're walking in, it's all death, because fear is death, okay? But it just depends on how much fear you're walking in. But there's abundant life. See, Satan is a counterfeiter of everything that God does. Everything. So if there's abundant life, there's abundant death. Do you see that? And some people have been living in that. Even people who have life in them. They're still in their carnal mind and they're choosing to live by things that are by nature death. That should never happen. Now, if you're working through things, awesome. That's what you need to do. But it should not take 20, 30, 40 years of being a Christian and still struggling with the same things you were struggling with 20, 30, 40 years ago before you got saved. It should not take that long. Why? Because then you're still thinking and concentrating on that instead of this. Do you see? And I'm just trying to breathe some hope into you to say, you know what? There's so much more that I didn't even know about. There's so much more that I haven't even experienced yet. Because God is bottomless. There's no end to Him. He's so beautiful. 
He's, he, he is life. Do you think God fears? No. Do you think God's ever lost a battle? Never. Do you think he's ever been out of faith? Never. Do you think he's ever been worried? Of course not. Never. And all that lives in you if you're a Christian. So why do we? It goes back to what I was saying. It's no faith. Do you see? Faith is the key to life. End of story. There's nothing else. Faith is absolutely the key to life. It's the key to freedom. It's the key to, to hope. It's the, it's the key to everything. Literally, faith is the key that unlocks every door. Period. And some of y'all need to pick that up and walk that out. Because you haven't been living by it. You've been living by everything that you, that it, like I said, has happened to you or what you hear, what your friends tell you. Like, like I've been saying for the last three days, some of y'all might need to change your friends. Because whatever faith you're walking and you're trying to live it out and you got old Bobby over here trying to wreck your life. Listen, get rid of Bobby if, that, if, that, if that's... Well, he's my only friend. Now you got Jesus. Anybody who tries to destroy your life is not a friend. Anybody who tries to get you down and bring you down and wallow in the mire and the muck and all that stuff with them is not a friend. They're an enemy. Why? Because they're working for your enemy. Period. I, I, I put this out the other day. I would rather stand on a hill of truth all by myself than a field of lies with a thousand friends. Period. Full stop. I won't do it. Why? Because this life is supposed to cost me something. The Bible says that father will hate son and son will hate father and mother and daughter and daughter-in-law and all that kind of stuff. Why? For the truth. That's what it says. It says there's going to be a division between you and those who, who don't believe. It says those of your own household will be your foes. Yep. Yeah. Are you prepared to pay that price? Most people aren't. I am, and I have, and I will. There is nobody in my life that I won't cut out for the sake of the gospel. Period. Not, not a single person. That's the way you have to live. Because what is this worth to you? Because if, if God is just an idea to you, you might not be going to the right place. And I'm, well, you're scaring me. Good. I'm, I'm glad. If you're not right with God, I want you to tremble right now. Absolutely I do. Well, that's mean. No, it's not. It's love. Because I'm here to tell you the truth in love, which is what the Bible says, to make sure that you're right with God. So if there's willful, habitual sin in your life right now, I want you to feel convicted. I want you to feel afraid. And if you don't like me, that's fine. Love him. Do, do, do you see? Now, do I want you to like me? Sure. Does it matter? Nope. Because I want you to love him. I want you to pour your life out to him as a devotion. Not an idea. And this is what it's going to cost you forever. This is the life you need to live forever. Now if there's moments of, man I messed up today. Get back on that thing. What happens when a kid falls off a bike when you're teaching them to ride? Or they fall down ice skating? You don't tell them, well, hey, Junior, <laughs> life's over for you now. Just lay there and don't do anything. What do you tell them? Come on, man, you can do it. Get on that thing and ride her again. You can do it. Let me help you this time. And you hold the seat and you run like the wind trying to, you know, and then they, you forgot to tell them how to put the brakes on, you know. So. <laughs> but even if you crash and burn into a wall... God's there to pick you back up, turn your bike around, and have you going the other way. That's who he is. And we think 
that he's some sort of enigma or something. He's just an idea. He's just a, I don't know, he's just a thing. He's not, he's your father. Do you see? And more people hang on to what their dad did than what their father wants to do. You see? He's so good, guys, I'm telling you. See, I I can say this because I didn't believe this up to like eight years ago. And we had been Christians to that point for 17 years. I didn't believe this. I thought God was the other thing. You know, just mean and... I mean, he, I mean, he, was, he, was, he was okay. I mean, but everything that went wrong in my life, apparently, from what I was taught, was a lesson from God. What a load of rubbish. Garbage. It's not true. The trials, the tribulations, all those things do not come from God. Most of them come from our own decisions. And then we go, God, why are you doing this to me? You did it to yourself. And there can be an attack of the enemy, of course, because he's trying to destroy your life. His, his old soul job in life is to, kill, to, uh, to steal, kill, and destroy. That's his whole job in life. And the number one thing, the only way, and the number one thing he steals from you is the word of God. Because if he can steal the word of God from you, you will not live by it and he's already got you. So what does that mean? If you're not in the word of God, he's already stolen it. Well, I don't understand the Bible. Are you just reading it or are you studying it? My wife keeps saying, and I'm going to do it because... I usually listen to her, but sometimes I'm a little thick in the head. It takes me a while to get things out. She's a very smart woman, by the way. Every, Bridget Wave, that's my wife. Okay? Best woman in the whole wide world. Everybody's looking now. I'm going to put out a teaching on how to study the Bible. Okay? Because for me, it, for me it's natural. It's just when I came into the truth, I, I, I am a, a bulldog for truth, is what Brother Curry labels me as. I'm a bulldog for truth. If I see something, I get a hold of it. And I stay on that thing. Okay? Um, Until I understand it. So for me, when I came into the truth, it was natural to me to um, go headlong. When I heard the truth of the Word of God, that I didn't have to be, you know, sick and broke and depressed and fearful and all those other things, uh, it was like... It was like I got saved after being saved for 17 years. Because I didn't know the truth, so I was not free. I had to know the truth, and then I got free. And the more truth I saw, the more truth I wanted, the more truth I got, the more truth I walked in. That's what happened. And I'm addicted to it. It's okay to be addicted to God. It's okay to be addicted to the Word of God. It's, that's, that's a good addiction. It's good. It's okay. You can't overdose on the Bible. <laughs> You can underdose on the Bible for sure, but you can't overdose on the Bible. You can't overdose with God. Because the more you partake, the more you live. You see? And this, you, listen, you will never live this life by coming in here every Sunday morning and then just going out and forgetting about it. You will never live the life. It will never happen. It will not happen. You live this life because you live it every single day. Every day. You be in the Word every day. Every single day. Well, you know, I don't have time to do that. How much TV do you watch? Well, you know, I only watch TV six hours a day. So for now, cut it down to five. Then you got an extra hour. Every single person in the world has what? how many hours a day? It's not how much time you have, it's how much time you make. Period. Do you see? So if you drive a lot, they say you're a truck driver or something like that, and you drive 12 hours a day, and of course you've got to get some sleep and all that, play the Bible. Everybody's got a device these days. They're fr- it's free. Play the Bible. Go down the road instead of listening to... garbage (laughs) play the Bible 
Play worship music. Good worship music. Okay, let me tell you, not everything that says is Christian worship music is Christian worship music. There's a lot of demonic Christian music. Period. Very demonic. So listen to good Christian music. Listen to the word. Drive down the road or whatever you, whatever you do and worship the Lord. You're spending time with him. See, people think that, I know we got to take the break, but I really encourage you, all of you, to stay. Because what I wanted to go into, we're going to go into next. Unless God has another change of plans. All right? If you get this, you will live. This is just what's going to happen. And again, the more, you, the more you do it, the more you live. Now, I don't think there's anyone in here that doesn't want more life in them. More joy. More hope, more peace, more faith, more whatever. And the only thing that's stopping you is you. That's it. Now, is, is the devil trying to stop you? Of course he is. But he can't stop you if you're doing this. He can't stop you. He cannot. 